Spanish didn't stand out among the, the convicts generally because there wasn't very many of them. Of the 160,000 convicts that were transported here in 80 years, there was only about 5%, so there was only about 8,000. Scottish convicts altogether. The Scottish convicts had a very high level of literacy in comparison to the rest of the convicts. Most of them could at least read, the majority of them could read and write. There was very few illiterate Scottish convicts and that's because the Scottish education system was much better than that of the English and the Irish at the time. Thomas Watling was a Scottish man. He was born in Dumfries in Scotland. He was raised by his aunt and we think from his later artwork that he was given some education in art and classical drawing drawing and painting. He ended up in Sydney when he was transported for having a forged banknote for 14 years. And when he got here, he was assigned to the surgeon, John White. John White was really interested in the natural surroundings of Sydney and together with Watling, they sketched and described a lot of the early wildlife and nature that they saw in the Sydney colony. We think that John White actually took quite a lot of Thomas Watling's sketches back to London with him. The British Museum now hold a collection of over a hundred signed sketches and a couple hundred more that by the style they attribute to Watling. Another Scots convict that we know was one of Australia's most famous bushrangers, John Buchan Buchanan. Uh, born in Eyre, uh, convicted of burglary in Glasgow, transported to Van Diemen's Land, which is now Tasmania. He was assigned in, uh, and worked in the, in the countryside on, for a local farmer, and then him and a group of mates armed themselves, stole the, uh, stole the squatters' guns and took off for a life in the, uh, in the bush and on the highways until 1834 when he was captured for robbing a bakery. He was convicted and sent here to Hyde Park Barracks to work as a gang labourer in the colony of New South Wales and work on the roads and, and, and uh, he had a very, very hard time. Eventually they, uh, they decided to send him to an even harsher place and that was at Moreton Bay in Queensland. Hugh Noble was a Scottish convict who was very literate. He got a job in the commissariat, which was the government storehouse, as a clerk. Um, he owned two houses in the rocks. Unfortunately, temptation got in the way of Hugh and he stole from the commissariat. Um, he ended up being flogged and sent to a penal colony, secondary penal colony at Port Macquarie. But he kept his houses and after he'd done his time there, he came back and bought more land and did quite well for himself, raised a family and off he went. Robert Campbell was born in Scotland. He joined his brother in Calcutta to help with the merchant trading business Campbell and Company. Robert was sent out to the Sydney Cove colony to see if the trading prospects here were any good and he decided that they were. So by 1810 Campbell and Company had set up warehouses and a wharf on the edge of Dawes Point on what we now call Campbell's Cove. Because of the amount of trading that Campbell and Company did in the early Sydney colony, that sense of need, of ration, of all the early goods began to alleviate. The early days when food and clothes were quite limited got a little bit easier for people. 